Welcome everyone to the final assembly of 2020. Today I will give a short message. We will then see a video from the Physics Club and Mr. Turin then has some sports awards. My theme for today is about value. One realisation about the pandemic and not being able to live our lives the way we want is all the things that I have promised myself I'm going to value more. My list of top five things that I'm going to value more are, first of all, people, friends, family, and actually having the ability and the opportunity to socialise. Number two is my job, which is very much about relationships and people. So I'm going to continue to come to work with positivity and a joy of working with others and as part of a team. Thirdly is travelling. I love travelling and exploring new destinations and gaining new experiences from visiting places. Next is reading and hobbies, including exercise and sport. Quite often when we're busy um, and before the lockdown, I didn't really prioritise this, but now I can really appreciate and see the benefit of having something else other than work. Finally, I value seeing the whole expression of a person's face. Mask wearing isn't great, as it has made it harder to read a person's expressions and makes interaction more difficult. However, now there is real hope of the vaccine and a possibility to return to our original normality. I hope that you can look back on this year and find activities or aspects that you will value in the future. Some people only judge the value of things by how much they cost. And we're going to play a little game now that looks at some of the bizarre things that have been bought on eBay. And to me, they question how we judge or de define the value of something. The first image is a tub of hair. How much would you pay for a tub of hair? How much would you pay if it belonged to Justin Bieber? Well, on eBay, this tub of hair, true it has a signature on the tub, sold for over £25,000, so that's over 25 lakhs. How much would you pay for a fedora hat? How much would you pay if it belonged to Farrell Williams? Well, this hat sold on eBay for over £55,000, which is for over 55 lakh. How much would you pay for the hat that Princess Beatrice wore to the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton? Well, this hat sold on eBay for over £81,000, so that's over 81 lakhs. These items may seem like huge amounts of money to us, but someone somewhere thought that the items were worth that much. We are all valuable. However, if we sold a pot of our hair on eBay, people might not be prepared to pay as much for it. Justin Bieber's hair sold for such a large sum because of who it belonged to and because it had value to the person who bought it. So I believe that value is often judged on three things. Who the item belongs to, why someone wants it, so their motive for having it, and what someone is willing to pay for it. I hope that you have all heard of Meryl Streep. She is a very, very famous actress, but this was not always the case. When Meryl Streep was an unknown actor, she went to an audition and had the following experience. This photograph was me on my way home from an audition for King Kong, where I was told I was too ugly for the part. This was a pivotal moment for me. This one rogue opinion could derail my dreams of becoming an actress, or force me to pull myself up by the bootstraps and believe in myself. I took a deep breath and said, I'm sorry you think I'm too ugly for your film, 
But you're just one opinion in a sea of thousands, and I'm off to find a kinder tide. Today, I have 18 Academy Awards. Sometimes in life, it can feel as if people don't value us very highly, or we are too stressed or preoccupied that we don't value ourselves. At times like these, we need to follow the example of Meryl Streep and decide to keep on trying. When people are considering whether to sell their house, they get something called an evaluation. This is where someone visits the house and evaluates how much they think the house is worth and therefore how much they think it will sell for. Often different value, valuers make different valuations. So the people who own the house have to decide which value they want to follow. If the owners go too low, the house may sell quickly, but they miss out on money that they could have had. However, if they go too high, the house may not sell because people viewing it may not think that it is worth that much. So ask yourself the following questions. Which voices do you listen to? What judgments are people making about your value and worth? Do you realise that you have a choice about whether to believe an evaluation is true or false? Understanding our value affects how we let others treat us and how we treat ourselves. I'm going back to the UK for the Christmas season and in my kitchen I have this sign which I love to read, especially when I am maybe down or when things are not working well or I am unable to achieve something because it provides in inspiration in the morning over a cup of tea. As we have been such a long time away from each other, it has been hard on all of us to find the reassurance and affirmation from others that we are valued. And I think we have all lost a certain amount of self-belief. So as I read some of the statements, I want you to accept the words for yourselves and I want you to believe these statements are about yourselves. You are loved. You are valued. You are crafted with beauty and purpose. There is no one like you. You don't need to look like the rest or talk like the rest or be like the rest. This world needs you as you are. There is no truth in the lie that you don't matter. You were put here for a reason. You were not an accident. You are not a mistake. So if we truly believe these statements, it would really affect the way we live, the way we treat others, the way we allow others to treat us and the decisions that we make. I believe that Christmas is a time of saying thank you for all that is in our lives and an opportunity to reflect upon and what and who we value. So wishing you all a restful winter break and for those of you who celebrate Christmas, a merry festive season. I think a good riddance to 2020 as we have had enough of you and let us all welcome with joy 2021, a year of hope. Thank you. What surrounds us but is often ignored, not visible and allows life to roam the world and explore? The answer? Air. Its presence is almost ignored until we find a use for it. Even breathing, which is necessary for us to live, is merely involuntary. But what else can we use air for? What can we do with air? The answer? Anything. Using the principles of physics, air can be used in a variety of ways and today, using one basic principle, we shall make a motor which is driven using the principles which govern air. Now, I would like to ask all of you, what happens when we heat up air? Well, it expands. Now. What happens in a closed container whose volume is fixed? The answer is that the pressure inside the container increases. When we cool down air, the opposite occurs. Now using these two simple principles, we are going to show you 
how to make an engine using homemade items. To make this contraption, we used an old coke can, a balloon, some copper wire, a steel wire gauze, and a lamp, among other things. Now let us see how this engine will actually work. As previously mentioned, if a gas is heated in a closed container, the pressure increases. Hence, if we have a small opening in the container, air will be pushed out from there. Keeping that in mind, that is where we should place our first piston. Now consider this. If air is heated from the bottom of the container, won't the top part be cooler? Hence, won't the air at the top be cooler than the air at the bottom? And won't this cause the air in the top to contract and the air in the bottom to expand? So, in order to get the air to alternatively expand and contract, we have placed the second piston within the airtight container. Hence, when the piston is in the upper half of the container, air gets pushed downwards and is heated. Similarly, when the piston is in the bottom half, air is pushed to the top and is cooled down. Now, all we need is for a mechanism to cause these pistons to work opposite to each other. This is done by connecting both pistons at opposite ends of a fixed flywheel, allowing for the two pistons to work in the opposite and to allow for the flywheel's momentum to let the motion become partially perpetual, provided there's an external energy source helping to maintain the temperature difference. As you can see, even the basic principles of physics allow for the creation of ingenious objects like the engine which you just saw. This is the beauty of physics, creation of beautiful new objects from a fixed set of rules. And this is what we strive to become within the physics club, to open people's eyes to the true nature of physics. Good morning, TISB. My name is Sura Bala Subramanian, and I'm the Secretary General of TISB Madhya My name is Aditi, and I'm the Director General. So, this year, as every other year, we're going to continue the legacy of TISB Man in our 10th year. We're taking it online on MS Teams. We're carrying forward the amazing success of our junior MUN with 10 exciting new committees, including a midnight crisis, which is going to wreak absolute havoc at 1 a.m and as well as a nice like a sprinkling of general assemblies, AIPPM, WHO, specialized committees and a Biden versus Trump war zone. So registrations are currently open and online. We encourage all of you to register. Um, go to our website www.tispmun.com or our Instagram at tispmun to register and get updates. We hope to see you there delegates. Happy morning. Good morning to all present here. Here are some sports announcements. The GISB sports teams had the opportunity to participate in a virtual competition organized by the Heritage School Delhi. Now, this school tested our students in three aspects. Level one was the motor component level 2 the skill component and level 3 the drill component so our students participated in all the levels and here are the results in under 14 years football level 2 winner Aryan Kocha overall we got third place and the team members were Aryan Kocha and Hamish Medalla. In under 17 years football, level 3 winner Akshit Jain. Overall, we were second place. Team members Akshit Jain and Nitikya Jaiswa. In moving on to hockey, in under 14 years category, both level 1 and 3 winner was declared to Harshit Gauda and overall we received first place. Team members were Harshit Gauda, Sakura Kumar, Tain Harur, Samanway Gupta and Josh 
Jerome. Moving on to under 17 years hockey, in level 2 winners, there were two joint winners, Springer Reddy, both from our school, and Janani Acharya. Level 3 winner, Leah Sharif. Overall, we received first position. Team members, along with the above, it was also Elias DeVos. Moving on to under 14 years volleyball, level 2 winner Sakura Suresh. Overall, first position. Team members were Pranati Shah and Sakura Suresh. Under 17 years volleyball, level 1 winner Vedanshi Amit Set. And overall, first position. Team members Jona. Osari and Vedanshi Amit Set. So I take this opportunity to congratulate all the winners and we are all so very proud of, proud of them. Thank you.